What's up, dudes? This is Red Estu Shredder here. <laughs> uh, once again, give you guys a music theory lesson. Um, so uh, let's just uh, get right into it. If you haven't already, check out my disclaimer. Check out my previous lesson videos. If you have checked out my disclaimer, you know that even though I'm tuned down, I still refer to notes, chords, and the strings and everything as if I was in standard tuning. So I'll call everything E and stuff like that even when it's D. So I tuned to D standard, which is all strings down one whole step. Um, if you want to play along, here's what it tuned to. Right? So um, now let's just get started. You know, I know a lot of times we get kind of intimidated when you hear the word music theory, you know. Don't be intimidated. Uh, you don't need to learn everything about music theory. You just need to learn kind of the basics. It's good enough for being a guitar player, for our purposes at least. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, a lot of times I read guitar magazines and stuff, and I notice a lot of times they say, like, oh, should I learn guitar theory, you know, and I think it's no question, absolutely you should. Um, you know, there's usually kind of two arguments for that, and first is, you know, well, hey, Jimi Hendrix was an amazing guitar player, and he didn't know any music theory. Well, he still used music theory principles and stuff, and besides, you know, I'm sure it would have been a lot easier for him if he had just known music theory. And it's like, another thing you can say is, well, you know, you can get through life and be really successful if you don't know how to read, but I would still advise you to learn how to read, you know? <laughs> and then the second thing I hear a lot is, you know, well, if you know music theory, you can be less creative. That's just absolutely not true. It's up to you to be creative. It's all on you. You know, it's your responsibility. Um, learning music theory is just kind of a guide, and you should feel free to break those rules and do whatever you want. Um, so if you analyze any like really good metal songs, you'll see they use music theory as kind of a guide, but then... Um, a lot of times they do break rules, so you should feel free to do the same thing. And once again, you know, having knowledge is not just going to all of a sudden make you play worse. That's just impossible. Play. So the next thing is just an important disclaimer. Um, these rules and things I'm going to talk about apply to Western music only. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so we're going to talk about notes. There's actually 12 notes, and they're called like A, B, C, D, E, F, G and there's these notes in between them called sharps and flats. So, um, for example, if you have an A note, I'll just show you right now, um, the next note after that is A sharp because it's a little bit higher, or you can call it B flat. It's just two names for the same note. So here it is. And then the next note is A sharp or B flat. And after that is just B. So, um, I know what you're thinking, there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? But then I said there's sharps and flats in between, so that would make 14 notes, right? There's seven, and then with the sharps and flats, I would make 14 notes. Well, there's actually two exceptions, so it really is 12 notes. Um, and those two exceptions are B to C and E to F. So, like I just showed you right now, we have here A, and then A sharp slash B flat, and then B. But the exception is, uh, when you get to B, the next note is not B sharp or C flat. There's no such note as B sharp or C flat. The next note is just C. So here you go, C, excuse me, B, and then C. And then the other example is the same thing, E to F. So here's an E note. The next note is not E sharp, it's not F flat. There is no such thing as either of those notes. The next note is just F. Okay? Um, now, these notes kind of start over in a cycle. Um, it's, it's called an octave. So you just start at a note, and then you can go all the way up to an octave, and then just start over, and start over, and start over. So you can have the same note, the same name for notes that are different. They're technically different notes, but they're named the same thing just because they're the same octave. So they have the same kind of tone or whatever. I'll just show you a quick example of that. So if we start at A right here, here's the octave of A. If you just know your octave shapes, you can kind of hear that. They're kind of the same note, but one's lower, one's higher. So anyway, if you just started, you know, right? And you could start from there and go even higher. You could start from the high one and go all the way up another octave and another octave and so on and so forth. It's just a cycle. All right, well, the next thing is just a concept of a key. A key is just very, very loosely defined as kind of the note you start and end a song on. Um, and that's called your root note. That's important. You should remember that. Um, so once again, that's a very loose definition of a key. 
And uh, songs can change key. There's these things called key changes. Um, and you should just be able to kind of hear that when they happen. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is intervals. Um, and it's just the, defined as the distance between two notes. So for our purposes, I'm going to show you the distance from our root note, which will be E, to some other note. And each of those intervals has a different name. Um, now you don't need to hear exact. You don't need to hear a note and know exactly. Okay, that's a G note. That's called perfect pitch. If you can do that, that's great. But I don't expect you to do that. But I do expect you to be able to hear the intervals in any song in any key and be able to understand. Oh, that's a uh, minor third interval or whatever it is. And be All right. So just remember our root is E, right? Uh, so the first interval I'm going to show you is just a half step E to F. It's a really dark kind of metal sounding interval. Uh, example I have for you is Metallic Song 1, right? Um, the next one is just a whole step, it's called a major second, E to F sharp, I don't have an example for that one though. And then the next example I can show you is really important, it's a minor third, E to G, right? So the example song I show you is uh, For Him Bell Tolls, the verse riff. So uh, it's really, like I said, really important in all kinds of music, uh, used all over the place. Um, and then there's the major third, which is E to F, excuse me, E to G sharp. I don't have an example for that one either. The next one is a fourth interval. Um, so for the key of E, it would be from E to A. And the example I'll show you is the metallic song. And just as for all you know, at the end, when they do the little... Well, there's the rhythm guitar is just going E to A, so it sounds like this. So, um, next one is going to be a flat five, really important to metal, really dissonant sounding. So, here's a song. Uh, which one is it? Uh, Freight Ends of Sanity. So, the interval is this. sounding, dissonant sounding, uh, used all over the place in metal. Uh, next one is just a regular fifth, so the end riff of the song, Battery. So the two chords I'm looking for here are the E and the B, so, so that's your fifth interval. It's really kind of uh, builds a lot of tension. Next one is a minor six, so it's going to be E to C. And the example I have for you is a song, uh, Ride the Lightning. It goes like this. The chords I'm looking for again is just this. It's really kind of an epic sounding um, interval. Iron Maiden uses it like all their songs. <laughs> Next one is um, major six, E to C sharp. I don't have an example for that one either. Uh, another one is minor seventh, just E to D. An example is again, uh, Freight Ends of Sanity, the end riff. And the last one is the um, uh, major seventh, and that one is uh, the riff from Blacken when he's going, um, what is this thing? Like, yeah, I can't remember the lyrics, but anyway, it's a really simple riff. Uh, sorry. So, it's just this. E and E flat. Alright you guys, that's it. Well, you know, now that you know your intervals, experiment with them, hear them in other songs, you know, try to decipher other songs and hear those intervals, apply them to other keys, um, learn them throughout your fretboard, um, and uh, just have fun with it. Alright you guys, the next uh, lesson is going to be about scales and chords. Alright, peace.